Okay, here's our RLC circuit. Here's a resistor. Resistor is in the same line as the inductor. The inductor goes in the same line as the capacitor. And then here's the edge of the capacitor. On this end, we have uh, ground from the oscilloscope and ground from the uh, function generator. On this side, we have positive from the function generator and one of the channel uh, one from the oscilloscope. Channel two positive of the oscilloscope is right here. You only need one of the ground uh, from the oscilloscope because they share the same ground. Theoretically, uh, you don't need two grounds because they're both plugged into the same outlet, uh, but it's safe, uh, better safe to do that. So, in these oscilloscopes, uh, we basically, uh, if you're upstairs, here's your function generator that you're going to use. It's built into the other oscilloscope, and so you have your amplitude, uh, your frequency, your range goes between 1K, 100, 10, etc. And so I think we want to be in the, why is it not? There. Now we're in the 10K range, and then we have square wave, uh, triangular wave, and sine wave. What we're looking for is the square wave. Now, looking at our signal up here, uh, we basically have our square wave in and our square wave out. Uh, and so we basically, the knob here changes your amplitude and the offset. Uh, and what we're looking for is to overlap our signals, and so uh, we want to put the ground basically on top of each other. And now we can get a much larger signal. And so channel 2 is 10 volts, channel 1 is 500 millivolts, and the reason uh, we have the dis distance is on the probe. Uh, so if you look down here on the probe, can you see the probe? There's a switch here, 10 times probe and one times probe. And so you want to make sure that the probe setting on the oscilloscope is the same as the probe. So now this probe is at one, and then on oscilloscope, uh, now the oscilloscope is set to one. So we have 10 volts in, 10 volts out. If you go into uh, your probe, uh, so here your probe is 10 times voltage, but we were at one times voltage. So we wanna set this attenuation is just one time. So that is correct. And then now it says that we're reading one volt uh, per division. Uh, similarly for channel two, we need to make our probe uh, match what we have. So the attenuation is one time on our probe. So if we change our frequency, uh, changing our frequency on the oscilloscope down here, uh, it makes our signal wider or narrower. What frequency do we want? Well, the frequency we want, we basically, here's our transient response and here's our steady state response. So we want to basically, we don't want to hang out too long at our steady state frequency. So that's pretty good right there in terms of our transient response. And then we can now change our horizontal scale. Uh, so now we have our beautiful uh, sine wave. And you can see this is underdamp because of the oscillations we're getting. And then because of the internal resistance inside our function generator, we actually are getting some oscillations in our output, even though our source internally in the function generator uh, is not oscillating. It's actually a square wave. So measurements we need to do. Uh, one thing we need to do is figure out what the frequency is of uh, this signal here. And in order to do that, we can use our cursors. Uh, so if we select our cursor, uh, the cor what we're basically looking for, we're looking for a time cursor, uh, the source, well, our, our response is on channel two. And so now, uh, what we're looking for, if we change our horizontal scale, we need to figure out what our steady state voltage is. And so 
uh, cursor 2 says it's basically 1.08 or 1.12, so it's around 1.1 volts uh, that will be your steady state on your output and so basically if we zoom in now and then we can also change our position so that we have basically an entire sine wave and so now we need me to basically adjust our cursor such that the first one starts at the one point uh, 1.08, 1.02, so that's around the steady state there. And then the second one, if we change your second cursor, we also want this one to say the same voltage. So that's 1.12. There's 1.12, so we're going from 1.12 to about 1.12. And so the period we have is now 13.1 microseconds. The frequency we have is uh, 76 kilohertz. So that's how we get the frequency of the undamped system. The other way we can do it, uh, which isn't quite as accurate, is we can move this cursor to this peak and this cursor to this peak. So now we're measuring the time between successive peaks and we get basically around the same information. Now, next question is how do we go uh, for the 90% uh, adjustment? Uh, and so what we we're starting with is uh, channel, uh, the voltage here is uh, minus 1.4 4 volts and our steady state voltage remember was uh, we can go this way and measure it again our steady state voltage here is 1.08 volts and so we're basically going up from minus 1.4 to uh, 1.08 and so what we have is we're going to be rising uh, 1. 4 plus 1.08, so it's rising about 2.4 volts, and the 90% of 2.4 volts uh, is basically 2.16 volts, which is, and then that is, uh, it's above 1.4, it's going to be basically to uh, one, something is not adding up, right? 2.4 to uh, 1.2 volts. No, oh, 1 1.2.6 minus 2.4. Uh, okay, I can't add. No, 